Hey everyone, and welcome back. We're diving deep today. Into yeah, into the world of autistic women, specific... especially uh, those diagnosed later in life. Yeah, and we're looking at some insights from Cheap ABA. Great website. It is a great website, all about affordable therapy and resources for the autism community. Yeah, for the autism community. Yeah, exactly. So we'll be exploring why diagnosis can often come later for women. Right. The impact of that. The emotional impact. Yeah. And and how we can support. Yeah. What kind of support can make a real difference? Absolutely. So to start us off, maybe you can give us a little bit of context. Yeah. You know, it's interesting because for so long, autism was viewed through a very specific lens. Oh, yeah. One that was really focused on males. Primarily. Yeah. Primarily how it presents in males. And as a result, many women, many autistic women went undiagnosed. Yeah. You know, their experiences were misunderstood or overlooked. The website uses this phrase, lost years. Wow. To describe how women feel after a late diagnosis. Yeah. It's powerful, isn't it? It is. It makes you think about spending years feeling different, yes. not fitting in. Right. And not knowing why. And then suddenly. There's an explanation. Yeah, there's a framework. For understanding yourself. Like a whole new light bulb moment. Exactly. It can be incredibly validating. Yeah. To finally have that aha moment. To put a name to it. Yes. To put a name to those feelings and experiences. You've carried them for so long. Right. But it also brings up a lot of complex emotions. Like what? Well, you might feel relief. Okay. But also sadness, maybe even grief for those lost opportunities. Oh, wow. You know, the relationships that might have been different. The paths you could have taken. Exactly. The paths you might have taken if you had known sooner. So you're also reevaluating your past. Yes. Through this new lens. It's like you've been looking at a map upside down yeah. your whole life. And suddenly you realize. You've been going in the wrong direction. You've been going the wrong way. Exactly. And that can be liberating and disorienting at the same time. Oh, absolutely. You're understanding yourself better, but also re-navigating your whole world. Relationships, too. Your relationships, your sense of self. The website talks about these challenges that come from this lack of understanding. Right. For the individual and for those around them. Like anxiety, depression, even sensory input. Yes. And it's important to remember that everyone experiences autism differently. Of course. But these challenges can be so much worse without the right support. Yeah. For example, many autistic individuals, especially women, have those heightened sensory sensitivities. What does that look like? Okay, so imagine a workplace okay. with fluorescent lighting, constant background noise, Ugh. and someone's perfume just wafting from their desk. I can't. For someone with sensory sensitivities, yeah. this would be completely overwhelming. It would be so overwhelming. It would make it difficult to focus and it could lead to anxiety or even meltdowns. So it's important to create environments that are inclusive. Absolutely. That are accommodating. That's where support becomes crucial. Yeah. And Cheap ABA breaks it down into three key areas. Okay, let's hear them. Acceptance, okay. accommodation, okay. and community. Let's break those down. Yeah. What does acceptance look like in terms of autism? It goes beyond just tolerating differences. Okay. It's about creating spaces where autistic women can be their authentic selves. Without judgment. Without judgment or pressure to conform. Yes. It's about celebrating neurodiversity and recognizing there's no one right way to be. So it's challenging those stereotypes. Exactly. Recognizing that everyone experiences and expresses autism differently. Right. It's about moving away from the idea that autistic individuals need to be fixed. Interesting. And instead focus on understanding and valuing their strengths and perspectives. It's like a new language. Yes. A new way of seeing the world. Recognizing that diversity of thought and experience enriches us all. Absolutely. Now let's move on to accommodations. This is all about recognizing that autistic women might need different ways to learn, work, and interact with the world. Can you give us some concrete examples? Of Let's go back to that overwhelming workplace scenario. Oh, yeah. Simple adjustments like providing noise canceling headphones, oh, okay. dimming the lights, or offering flexible work arrangements yeah. could make a huge difference. So we're talking about making sure that the world is accessible. Absolutely. Inclusive for everyone. Regardless of how their brain works. Love it. And finally, community. Community. Which might be the most powerful form of support. Why is community so important? Imagine finally finding people who truly get you 
people who share similar experiences. Who can relate to your challenges. In ways others can't. Yes, that sense of belonging. Of not being alone. Of not being alone can be so empowering. It's like finding your tribe. <laughs> exactly. A place where you can be yourself. Right. Speaking of which, can you explain what masking is? Masking is a common coping mechanism for autistic people, especially women. Okay. It involves suppressing or camouflaging autistic traits to try and appear more neurotypical. So it's like putting on a performance. Exactly. Trying to fit in. Trying to fit into a mold that doesn't quite feel right. And it could be draining. Incredibly draining. Yeah. It might involve things like forcing eye contact. When it's uncomfortable. Yes, suppressing stimming behaviors. Yeah, yeah. Or mimicking social cues that don't come naturally. That sounds exhausting. It is. It can take a huge toll on mental health and well-being. Absolutely. It can lead to burnout, anxiety, and a sense of feeling like you're constantly pretending. Never being yourself. Never truly able to be yourself. So finding a community where you can drop that mask. So important. So important. And embrace your authentic self. And that's why organizations like the Autism Women's Network okay. and the Autistic Self-Advocacy Network, ASN, yes. are so valuable. I've heard of them. They provide spaces for autistic women to connect, share their experience, and advocate for their needs. The website also mentions the National Autistic Society. Yes, another great resource. Have you had any experience with these organizations? I haven't personally, but I've heard incredible stories about the impact they've had on people's lives. Yeah. It's amazing to see how these communities create a sense of belonging and empowerment. It sounds like a real lifeline, especially especially for those newly diagnosed. Right, trying to navigate this new understanding of themselves. I'm wondering how a late diagnosis can impact an autistic woman's sense of self and her relationships. That's a great question. It is a big one. It is, and it's something we definitely need to explore further. Okay, well, you've definitely piqued my interest, but I think we'll have to save that conversation. For part two. Yes, for part two of this deep dive. Welcome back to our deep dive into, into the world of autistic women okay. and the unique challenges of late diagnosis. Right. Before the break, we were talking about the impact this can have on a woman's sense of self. And her relationships. Yeah, her relationships. It's a big topic. So let's unpack it. Yeah. You know, it's fascinating to consider how a late autism diagnosis can be both liberating and disorienting. Yeah. On one hand, it offers this new framework oh. for understanding lifelong experiences. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It can really shake the foundation of one's identity and relationships. So it's like finally getting a key to a door you've always seen, yeah. but never been able to open. Right. You finally explore what's inside. Right. But it also means questioning everything. About yourself and the world around you. Exactly. If you've spent years feeling different but not knowing why, yeah. you might develop coping mechanisms that aren't really aligned with your authentic self. You mean like trying to force yourself into boxes that don't quite fit. Exactly. Trying to meet expectations that weren't designed with neurodiversity in mind. Exactly. And that constant effort to conform can lead to feelings of inadequacy, low self-esteem, even a sense of being a fraud. Wow. And then a diagnosis can be like looking in a mirror for the first time. And seeing yourself. And truly seeing yourself reflected back. It's like suddenly realizing you've been speaking a different language. This whole time. And now you finally have someone who understands you. That's a great analogy. It is. It's like finally having the words to describe your internal experience, your thoughts, your feelings, your way of interacting with the world. Yeah. It can be so validating, but it also means reevaluating your past, your choices, your relationships through this new lens. And that reevaluation process can extend to relationships. As well. Yeah. How does a late diagnosis impact an autistic woman's relationships? with family, friends, partners. Imagine realizing that many of the communication breakdowns, the social misunderstandings, the emotional dysregulation you've experienced in relationships stem from being autistic. I can see how that would be a huge revelation. Right. It's like suddenly understanding why certain interactions always felt off. Yeah. Why you struggled to connect in ways that seem effortless for others. Exactly. And this realization can lead to some really important conversations. Oh. It can help loved ones understand past conflicts, yeah. appreciate differences in communication styles, and adjust their expectations. So it's not just about the individual self-discovery. Right. It's about educating those around them. Fostering empathy and understanding. Yes, within their support network. Absolutely. 
but I imagine it's not always an easy conversation. You're right. It's important to remember that not everyone is receptive or willing to learn. Oh, right. Some people might dismiss the diagnosis, minimize the challenges, or even blame the autistic individual for relationship difficulties. That sounds incredibly invalidating. It can be. Especially when you're already going through so much internally. Right. It highlights how crucial it is to have a supportive community. Yes. People who get it. Who can offer validation and understanding. Without judgment. Absolutely. Finding those spaces, whether online or in person, where you can connect with others who share similar experiences can be a game changer. Yeah, it can. It can help reduce feelings of isolation, provide peer support, and build confidence and self-esteem. We talked about the need for accommodations in various settings. Like the workplace example. Yeah, like the workplace you get. Right. Can you talk a bit more about how those apply specifically to autistic women? Of course. Let's go back to the topic of sensory sensitivities, yeah. which are very common among autistic individuals, especially women. Right. Remember, these sensitivities can involve any of the senses. Okay. Sound, sight, touch, taste, smell. So something that might be mildly annoying to one person. Could be completely overwhelming. To another, like that perfume. Like the perfume in the office. That you mentioned. Yes, and those sensitivities can impact everything from work productivity to social interactions to mental health. It's not just discomfort. It's not just about discomfort. It can lead to real anxiety. Yes, and difficulty functioning. In certain environments. For sure. So what kind of accommodations can help? Well, sometimes it's as simple as providing a quiet space for breaks, allowing flexible work hours to avoid those peak sensory overload times. Or even just being mindful of strong scents or sudden noises. Being aware, being considerate. Exactly. Making small adjustments. That can have a big impact on someone's ability to participate and thrive. And then there's communication. Communication, which can also be challenging. Yeah. Autistic women may communicate differently both verbally and non-verbally. Can you give some examples? Sure. Some autistic women might be very literal in their communication. Okay. Interpreting things exactly as they are said without picking up on implied meanings or social nuances. Interesting. Others might struggle with social cues like eye contact or find it difficult to initiate or maintain conversations. So how can we adjust our communication styles to be more inclusive? Simple things like using clear and concise language, avoiding idioms or sarcasm that can be easily misinterpreted, and being patient with responses can make a huge difference. Okay. Sometimes written communication like email or text can be helpful as well, allowing people to process information at their own pace. It sounds like it's all about recognizing that there are different ways of communicating. Yes. And being respectful of those differences. Rather than expecting everyone to conform to a single standard. Absolutely. And remember, accommodations aren't just about external factors. Okay. Sometimes they involve helping autistic women understand their own needs and advocate for themselves. That's a good point. Yeah. It's about empowering them to say, hey, I need a quiet space to work effectively. Or I communicate best through email. Or please don't expect me to maintain constant eye contact. During our conversation. Exactly. And this leads us to an interesting question. Okay. What's that? How do these accommodations differ for autistic women who are diagnosed later in life compared to those diagnosed in childhood? That's a really insightful question. Yeah. It seems like there might be unique challenges. For those who receive a diagnosis later on after they've already spent years navigating the world without that knowledge. You're absolutely right. And that's something we'll delve into right after a short break. So we were talking about how accommodations might look different for someone diagnosed with autism later in life. It seems like there's a whole other layer there. Like a whole other layer of complexity. If you've spent years navigating the world, you know, without knowing you're autistic, yeah. you've probably developed certain coping mechanisms, ways of interacting that have helped you get by. Like you've built a whole system. Yeah. Based on a different instruction manual. And now, and now you're having to rewrite the code. Yeah, rewrite the code, exactly. And for some women, those coping mechanisms might involve masking. Right. Which we talked about. Which we talked about trying to hide their autistic traits and fit in. Yeah, trying to fit in with neurotypical expectations. And that can be really draining. Incredibly draining. Harmful to one's mental health. Exactly. So for someone diagnosed later, part of that accommodation process might involve unlearning those deeply ingrained behaviors. Those habits of suppressing their true selves. Yeah, it's like... It's like unlearning a language. Yes. You've been speaking your whole life and then learning a new one that feels more authentic. That's a powerful analogy. 
It is. And it highlights the emotional work that often accompanies a later diagnosis. Yeah. That's it's not just about adjusting those external factors, but it's about navigating the internal landscape. Right. Processing all that. Processing those feelings of lost years mm -hmm. and coming to terms with this new understanding of yourself. It sounds like therapy would be really crucial. Absolutely. Having a therapist who specializes in autism in adults, particularly in women, can be so valuable. They can really help guide. They can provide support, guidance, and tools to navigate those emotional complexities. So if someone's listening, they suspect they might be autistic, where would you recommend they start? Well, the first thing to remember is that self-diagnosis is valid. Okay. Not everyone has access to formal diagnosis, which can be expensive and time-consuming. Yeah, that's true. There are many online resources, books, and community where you can learn more about autism in women and see if it resonates with your experiences. The organizations we mentioned earlier, like the Autism Women's Network and ASAN, would be great starting points. Absolutely. They offer so much information and support specifically for autistic women. Yeah. And they can help you connect with others who understand what you're going through. What if someone decides to pursue a formal diagnosis? What advice would you give? I think finding a clinician who specializes in autism in adults and particularly in women is key mm -hmm. because autism can present differently in women and some clinicians might miss the signs. If they're not familiar with more subtle presentations, exactly. it makes you wonder how many women are going undiagnosed. Simply because the diagnostic criteria aren't adequately capturing their experiences. We need more research, more awareness, more training. We do. To make sure everyone who needs that diagnosis can get one. For sure. Well, I think we've covered a lot of ground today. What are some key takeaways for our listeners? I think the most important thing to remember is that a late diagnosis is not a failure. It's true. It's an opportunity for self-discovery, growth, and connection. I love that. There is support available, and there is a community waiting to welcome you. With open arms. With open arms. Beautifully said. And remember, even if you haven't received a formal diagnosis, if you resonate with what we've talked about today, you're not alone. You're not alone. Yeah. Don't hesitate to reach out to those resources that we mentioned or seek guidance from a trusted professional. This deep dive has really highlighted how crucial it is to challenge those stereotypes, advocate for inclusive environments, and support autistic women in all their brilliance and complexity. I love that. So as we wrap up, I want to leave our listeners with a final thought. What can each of us do in our own spheres of influence to create a world that is more understanding, accepting, and supportive of autistic women? It's a question worth pondering and a challenge worth embracing. Thanks for joining us on this deep dive. And until next time, keep learning, keep questioning, and keep advocating for a more inclusive world.